hooked up. We'll get going here. Hello, hello. All right. Uh, let's go ahead with Chris. Hey, Dana. You know, I know you don't want to make excuses or anything of that nature, but how much did the early morning start affect that slow start uh, tonight or this morning, I guess? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, we got them up early. Um, you know, we seemed to st step slow that first half. We didn't get any loose balls. I mean, they picked up every loose ball. They were quicker to the ball, quicker to the rebounds. Um, you know, we we haven't been shooting the three well. We shot it a little better at Utah State and, and really picked us up. I thought we had a lot of good looks early. Um, you know, Waldo hit the first one, Davion hit one. But, you know, after that, we, uh, you know, Quincy's kind of nursing a bad ankle and, and uh, he struggled a little bit. So uh, other than Dante, Dante played really hard, really well, five block shots. I mean, that 13 rebounds, uh, 13 points. I, uh, he was, he was by far the biggest bright spot, you know, of the team. James. Danny, you certainly hit on it there. And without Will, I understand you guys without your best three point shooter and your next two best combined to shoot five of 10. So it really becomes about a depth issue at shooting when everybody else combines to go one of 14 and it's the fifth time in seven games you shoot below your season average is that kind of a key for not just the day Dana but going forward in terms of trying to correct this is about increasing the depth at shooting more than just any one individual oh absolutely no no uh, to spread the floor you know you need three or four guys you know that can really shoot it um you know and and um uh, you know, Eric's been a little inconsistent. Uh, Davey has been a little inconsistent. Uh, but they, you know, today, you know, they were five for 10, like you mentioned. But, you know, Quincy had been shooting a little better. Rivaldo, you know, uh, he's a 25% three-point shooter. He's He's got to take fewer. Uh, he got a little happy there after he hit his first one, um, you know, and, and uh, probably should have drove it at the basket a little bit more. But, uh, uh, no, we... Uh, we've got to get shooters. Uh, you know, that's that's something that, you know, is so obvious to the game right now. You know, teams that are shooting the three well just have a tremendous advantage and uh, it spreads the floor. It also makes the opportunities for two so much better. So, uh, you know, that will be a priority here in the offseason. Matt? It, Danny, you touched on it there a little bit, but just your thoughts on where this team needs to improve in, in the offseason. What are your your focuses on, you think? Well, just like every year, we'll we'll evaluate everything um, that we're doing as a, as a program, uh, our staff, our players, um, you know, and figure out which direction we want to go. And, uh, you know, Chris has an opportunity, which, you know, I'm really happy for him and Jody. And, and uh, you know, he's 53. He's waited for this opportunity to have a Division One head coach for a long time. And I'm really happy for him. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to our staff, um, you know, figure out, you know, our players who wants to be there, the transfer portal. You know, we'll probably have some guys going, some guys staying, you know, and, and that's their, their right. That's their opportunity. You know, so I, I only want guys that want to be at Oregon and, and are fully invested in our program. Uh, our work ethic, you know, has to get better. Whoever stays has to be all in. Um, and so a lot of adjustments to make here and, and guys are going to have to, to really work hard in the offseason. We're going to have to have a great summer. I made that excuse. I, you know, we just didn't have a good summer last summer. And, and I do think it affected our performance this year. Um, but. You know, other teams had bad summers and they bounced back and, and had better seasons than we did. So uh, it's just one factor, but we're going to have to have a good summer. We're going to have to figure out, you know, who wants to be at Oregon and, and uh, you know, uh, 20 wins and the NIT, and that's not our goal. You know, our goal is, is to have the best team possible and get back to challenging for conference championships. Uh, you know, that's that's what we want to do. Jacob? Uh, Coach, players like Rivaldo Soares and Nate Biddle saw bigger roles in the tournament. Can you give a, an assessment on how they performed over the past two games? 
um, you know, kind of what they've done in practice. You know, Nate got off to a real slow start this this season, uh, just blending in and working hard in practice and, and trying to be, you know, figure out a role. He, he's been much better the last month, and that's why he's earned a few more minutes because uh, he has practiced harder. And, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely got some talent. He's got to get a lot stronger, and, and his motor's got to ramp up, you know. But uh, uh, there definitely is a lot of talent there, and with a lot of hard work, you know, he's got a chance to, to really help us. Uh, Rivaldo, you know, he's got a lot of work to do, you know, and uh, he's got two years left if he uses his COVID year. So uh, he's got plenty of time to, to make adjustments and, and get better. Uh, but he has he has a lot of work to do. Take a couple more, uh, James, then Chris. Dana, on the conversations with Will specifically, obviously this is not how he wanted things to end, I can imagine. At the same time, I'm sure he was planning at some extent for this to be the end for him. When, when will you have that conversation with him? I know next week is break, but in terms of just what the plan is, because like I say, I understand that and I appreciate you give me the heads up to, to be able to put out what it, what it was, Dana, but that no, nobody wanted their career to end in, in the way that it's ending here for Will. No, I mean, in this area, era of, of social media and, you know, everybody wanting to know everything and know everybody's business. Um, you know, some people told me there's a lot of stuff, you know, rumors about Will's finally, you know, allows me to tell her he's got mono. And he's had mono, um, you know, he started feeling poorly. I, you know, I maybe as early as the Arizona trip and, you know, whatever. Um, he didn't want me to say anything, so I didn't. But I talked to him last week and I just said, well, you know, I've heard people saying, you know, <laughs> stress and, you know, you've left the team, you've left, you know, uh, he just wanted to be left alone. If you know Will, he just he's quiet, he's reserved. He he just he didn't want everybody knowing his business, and uh, I understand that. But like I said, in this day of social media, and you know, I don't, I don't partake. I don't, you know, I just if there's something out there that I need to know, somebody will tell me. But I don't waste any time looking, and uh, I don't care what people say. You know, I don't care what people do. And I know people don't care what I think and they don't care what I do. So I don't put it out there. You know, I've got a job to do. I try to do my job, uh, you know, so uh, I, I guess I'm just old and stubborn in my way. I just, you know, no one cares what I think. No one cares what I'm doing. You know, uh, I'm the coach at o Oregon. I'm not no political statements, no, nothing. All right. I coach basketball and, uh, you know, I try to put a staff together. I try to put a team together. And, and like I said, that's nobody cares what I think on anything. All right. Except when I talk to you guys, you might have some questions. But Will is a great young man. He's quiet. He just prefer not. I don't know what he does on social media. I don't know if he's out there talking all the time or not. I, like I said, I don't know. But I know in this particular case, he just you know, was down. He's down. He wanted to help our team. He wanted to finish the season and he, he got sick. I mean, he dizzy and headaches and, and he was sick and he can't play be, you know, because the effects of mono. So um, anyway, that's, uh, I want Will to be happy. If Will wants to come back, great. If he wants to go try to make it in the pros, great. If he wants to go somewhere else, great. I want Will to be happy just like I do all my other players. Cause I know if they're not all in at Oregon, we're not, we're not going to accomplish what we want to accomplish. And I've loved working with Will for four years and I hope he comes back. I hope he comes back. I hope he comes back and gets in that weight room and, and uh, you know, works on his game and, and is the player I know he is because he's, he's a heck of a basketball player. His instincts are good. Uh, he's a good defender. You know, he's, he's a good basketball player. So Whatever he decides to do, though, I'll, I'll back him. You know, if he's tired of me, I understand that, too. Uh, and, and so I just I want him to be happy. 
because I know if he's happy and working his tail off, some really good things are going to happen for him. But I just want people to know that, you know, he's fine. He's, he's finished the quarter. He's in his room. He didn't leave Eugene. He's, he doesn't have any stress problems. All right. He just, he got sick. And, uh, uh, I hope, you know, the, he gets this mono taken care of and, and he can get back to work, you know, and, and get to work on his body, get to work on his game because he's a heck of a player. All right, let's go quick here, Chris and Matt. Yeah, Dan, staying on, on this topic, are you able to quantify it all, just like what you missed these last three weeks without Will in the lineup and how much he could have made a difference for what you were trying to accomplish these last three weeks? You know, I don't. You know, I, I, I don't. Um, you know, uh, you always wonder, but you, you play with the guys that you have, you know, and – Man, I go back to Chris Boucher tearing his ACL and, you know, and, and Bo Bo hurting his foot and, you know, different injuries we've had, and, you know, to key guys. And, you know, could we have done something else? Could we have finished better because of it? Um, you know, those are always just questions in the back of your mind. But that's part of the game. You know, guys getting sick, uh, you know, uh, guys getting hurt. Uh, that That's just part of the game. And, uh you know, I, I wish we would have had Will because I think we would have we would have finished stronger, uh, especially if he was feeling good. But, you know, that is part of the game. And uh, uh, Will's a, a really good player. Like I said, he's our leading scorer, our leading three-point shooter. He's our basketball savvy. He by far, you know, uh, he's got the best basketball savvy. So, uh, yeah, we missed him. But like I said, a lot of other teams are playing without critical guys also. Last question, Matt. Danny, you touched on the shooting. Do you feel like Dior and, and Tyrone, the two guys that you've signed, are, are big pieces of that? Or do you need more than just those two guys? Oh, as I said, Matt, we'll evaluate everything. You know, I, I think they can shoot it, you know, but we've got guys who can shoot it. Uh, we need, you know, those old Billy Tubbs, we got shot takers and shot makers. I need some of those shot makers, you know, and uh, – uh, so, you know, those percentages will have to improve some, uh, but, you know, I, I know we got some guys who can shoot it and, uh, they're going to have to work awfully hard. You know, first one to practice last one to leave is, is usually a pretty good indication of who's shooting it well. And I'm going to tell you, Quincy, the last month has been that. And until he messed up that ankle a little bit, you know, this last week, you know, you go back and look at his last five or six games. He has shot it well. Now, he didn't shoot well today, but he has shot it well. That's because he was the, in the gym. You know, this isn't rocket science, fellas, because if it was, I, I couldn't be involved with it. This is who's in the gym, who's putting the work in. You go right down the line. I've never had a good player in 42 years that I've had to ask to come to the gym. Never. Never. The guys who were there are the guys that play. And like I said, if I got to beg them to come to the game or I got to beg them to play hard, we're, we're not going to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Because if I'm coaching effort, then you'll never have a basketball team. You'll never have a team. And if I got to beg guys to come to the gym, they'll never be players because you got to want to be there and you got to want to work on your game. And if I got to tell you to go to the gym or beg you to go to the gym to do that, Maybe some other coaches have been able to figure it out, but I sure have the guys who have been players at Oregon, at Creighton, at Kansas state that I've been fortunate enough to work with over 42 years, the guys who are the good players and have really demonstrated that game in game out are the guys that bring it every day and are consistent every day with their effort. And it's that old saying, you know, hard work doesn't guarantee success. But the lack of hard work, you know, definitely guarantees you're going to end up on the other end of it. So uh, we're going to have to work. You know, I like I said, I wish I had a magic wand, but I sure don't. You know, we've been fortunate to have workers. Chris Duarte, Eugene, you know, Chris last year, 90 percent of the time was the first one to practice, last one to leave. Eugene was right behind him. Eight Pritchard before that. Dylan Brooks. 
I had to chase Dylan out a few days before a game. I said, but we got a game tomorrow. Get out of here. You know, uh, I didn't chase anybody out of the gym this year. So, uh, you know, we're just, we're going to have to get back to what, what helped us be successful. And, you know, we got the 20 hour rule, you know, and now we got the eight hour rule, four hours on the floor. Um, you know, I get my opinion on that. We're in America. Where, where have you ever been penalized for working hard? I mean, that's, I, I don't understand that at all. Okay. Limit us four hours with a guy, you know, a guy wants to work. That's part of the reason guys go pro because we don't work them out. You know, we, we don't spend enough time with them. So, you know, they won't work on their game. They go pro. And so, uh, you know, and like I said, that's, <laughs> I'm getting off, off subject here, but, uh, um, we, we got to get back to those guys really busting it and it's in them, you know, it's in Quincy, it's in Will, it's, it's in Dante, it's in those guys, uh, but they're going to have to have to get in the gym and, and really get it done. So that's a long explanation. You guys are tired of me too. We'll see you. Thank you guys.